Ladies and gentlemen, the brand new director of the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium, Miss Krista Gent. Hello. <laughs> I'm so happy I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> you practice it very well. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it is a pleasure to meet you. I've heard so many great things from Steve Russo about you. So uh, welcome to East Kentucky. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Maryland. So okay. uh, uh, quite a small rural town. Um, so almost moving back here kind of feels like being back home again. It's kind of fun. I've never been to Maryland. Do, mm -hmm. do they have mountains there too? Uh, they're, they're, you're about maybe one to two hours away if you want to get up like into some actual mountains. But mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're close by. I, I didn't live in the mountains. I lived in the farm town but okay. but yeah but they're there and then there's beach or forest kind of anything is only within a few hours which is really similar to here yeah, yeah it is weird that you think of like i don't know what people think of when they think of maryland but i don't think <laughs> of beaches i have a buddy that lives up there now and he like okay. i guess lives near the beach mm -hmm. and it just like always weirds me out when he makes a <laughs> facebook post at the beach i'm like are you in florida like no i'm in maryland i'm like whoa <laughs> yeah the whole coast which you, it's hard. Yeah, it's weird to think about, but yeah, it's right on there. I say it gets pretty cold up there too. It can be. It's it's was pretty hot. I haven't actually. I haven't lived there for about four years or so. But mm -hmm. my family's there, so that it can still get pretty hot. But yeah, they have really all four seasons, which I feel like is a rare thing to get <laughs> at I, different places. Welcome to East Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have the same exact. thing. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> so what? Like what? Uh, Brought you here to Eastern Kentucky. How does somebody from Maryland show up in Eastern Kentucky? <laughs> the same thing happened with Steve Russo coming from yep. New York. What I is know. it with you directors <laughs> of the Science Center coming from everywhere? We follow the great openings, the great places. So really we're here because of the Science Center. So, so yeah. you've been uh, working there for two weeks now, is it? Mm -hmm. It's been about two weeks. How's everything going with it so far? Great. Uh, it's, I mean, it's closed right now for renovations, yeah. but that's been really a great time for me to kind of get to know the space and the people that I'm going to be working with. And we're starting to come up with ideas of what we can do when we start putting everything back, back in and yeah. what kind of programs can we offer and what kind of events can we do for the community. So it's actually been very nice to have yeah. this time to kind of brainstorm and think and, and plan. Yeah, you're not just uh, thrown into the water right. and say swim. You right. got some time to plan a little bit. That is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been uh, working with stuff like planetariums and astronomy and stuff like that? For probably, I would say, <laughs> since 2010. I've oh. been involved with planetariums. Um, professionally, it's been about four years. Um, but before that, I've... The, the very first planetarium I ever got involved with, uh, it was an inflatable one. So I don't know if you've ever seen Whoa, <laughs> those no, before. Whoa, no, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, a lot of people, when they see them, think it's a bouncy house. <laughs> but it's not. It's much cooler. Um, can, it, you, can you bounce in them? Uh, you can. You I won't come ask. back up again. <laughs> you can bounce down. You won't come back up. Um, but it, it basically inflates with a big fan. You can fit about... 30 or so kids inside and you just kind of crawl in and uh, the the sky and different things are projected onto that inflatable mm. dome. So it's like a big tent kind of. Um, and that was, I, I got the opportunity to mm. help out with that in college. And since then I was like, those are really cool. I really like these things. And then I've been involved. I've, I've basically put myself in planetariums every chance that I've gotten. And my goal was to get here basically. Well, well, so what like, got you into uh, space and astronomy and stuff like that? What Was it just that one incident, or were you kind of a space person before that? <laughs> um, I, I've been asked that question a couple times, and there was never one big, like, whoa moment that I can yeah. think of for space and astronomy. I think I've just always been aware that there's stuff above. You know, I, I, I also super love clouds and yeah trees and just kind of everything so i guess i was always interested in just nature but at night especially i yeah. i had so many questions i guess and and when it came to college and i was looking at okay what well, i knew i wanted to teach and then i was looking at what kind of things i could teach and i saw earth and space science and i said that's a th i can do that like, that's yeah. a real thing like i can actually do a job about this that's awesome and i had never realized it yeah um 
So I, I think it was just always in me that I loved it. Yeah, see, yeah. see that that's what I love about space, too, is just all the questions that I have about it. And that's why it's so fascinating to me, because some whenever whenever it comes to some stuff in space it's still a guessing game mm-hmm. like i've been watching a lot of documentaries here recently about black holes mm-hmm. you know and that and that's why like i've been into that so much here recently is because it's still a guessing game yep. still really <laughs> nobody knows yeah but it's kind of that's so fun to me and yeah. that really gets to the whole field of science is for as much stuff as we know there's still so much we don't know but that's really exciting that we have so much to learn still. Yeah, it, it's kind of boring when you already know everything, <laughs> yeah. you know. You, like you want to – somebody like me, I just love to think. Mm-hmm. And I have a mind that is going 24-7, I feel like. And and that's why I love space is because it's still a guessing game. You're still thinking so much. And also just a <clears> – <throat> excuse me. The uh, recent activity that has been going on with space mm-hmm. as well. I think that it's uh, – Almost like people felt in the 1960s with the entire public kind of getting into it and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, there's a lot coming up. (laughs) I mean, there's always been stuff happening, but I feel like it definitely comes in waves about the public eye, how much it gets talked about. And then like, oh, okay, just, you know, we'll focus on something else. And then now we'll Hmm. come back again. So it's always great when different outlets are sharing what's what's being done. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the uh, the space race that happened a few months ago with mm-hmm. Jeff Bezos and uh, what was that one guy's uh, Sir Richard Benson? How did you say that guy's name? The guy that the Virgin Galactic, Virgin guy. Galactic guy. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, that that <laughs> that's, guy. That's what I call <laughs> that guy. How, did you uh, get a chance to watch any of those live streams? Um, I don't know if I watched the live streams. Um, I am less. I, I'm. More invested in the, um, I guess, exploration of other worlds in our solar system and less about the commercial Mm -hmm. um, aspect of it, which it's still very interesting. But I I will say I haven't been following that as closely as other other missions and things. But but it was I I know that those three um, were competing for who was going to build the uh, moon lander. Mm -hmm. And... um, yeah, because it was Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. Yeah, all all these yeah. things having commercial. I'm talking about like three different things. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're you're fine. I, 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 I'm I'm keeping up here. I'm keeping up. You haven't lost me yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. You haven't lost me um, yet. Right, because I I think also they had done the first commercial, like fully, um, like citizen based space flight. Yeah. I, I, well, right. Yeah, that was a uh, Richard. Uh, what was his name? Branson. I'm just going to say Branson. Rich, <laughs> Sir Richard Branson. <laughs> and I liked his flight a lot more than I liked Jeff Bezos because to mm-hmm. me, Jeff Bezos, like, I, he might not be a bad person, but, like, just the the stereotypical Lex Luger type villain, like, that looks like Jeff Bezos to me. <laughs> and, and I watched his interview afterwards, and I don't know. The guy just is creepy to me. I don't know. Maybe it's the bald head. I don't know. But, like, Sir Richard uh, Branson, whatever his name is, where he's British, I guess. Like, I just mm-hmm. liked sp- him speaking more. Sure. Just and, like, he has a soothing voice. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know. It just it kind of seemed like it, it meant more to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, Richard is the one working on the plan that, like, where other people can travel. And also, right. just, like, he said, like, a lot of, like, motivating stuff Mm -hmm. he's like at one point he said like to all the dreamers out there if we were able to do something like this imagine what you can do yeah jeff it seemed like he was making it more about himself and his accomplishments Mm -hmm. richard was basically saying like hey we're paving the way for the younger generation coming up to do stuff much bigger and much better but and but of course he had to have the the virgin logo on everything sure. <laughs> but i think he's the one that's uh working on that but whoo it, it i hope they get it figured out a little bit more because just watching them take off i was so nervous mm-hmm. the entire time it's basically a big plane that this has is in spaceport yeah right? yeah I, I, th- I think so but like like the uh, thing that they how they launched into space mm-hmm. that's what was just so crazy to me like it's a big plane mm-hmm. carrying their plane they detach them and then they go at just 
supersonic speeds mm-hmm. into uh, I, I forget how high they went. I think mm-hmm. it was like two hundred thousand feet, three hundred thousand mm-hmm. feet, and uh, everything went okay. But whoo, I just I, I couldn't imagine what it felt like. Mm-hmm. I love roller coasters and everything. Like it's so fun whenever you get that takeoff. But I don't know what that takeoff would feel like. That's it's pretty I crazy. I, I'm terrified of heights, so I don't know if I how I would feel in that either. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but if, but whenever they do, because eventually they are going to like make it to where I guess not everybody first, but sooner or later will be able to take a vacation in space. Right? Are, are you going to be one of the people that do that? I don't know. I don't know if I will. Um, probably. Yeah, I, I I keep saying like I don't know if I would, but re- yeah. if I got offered the chance, I probably would do. <laughs> no matter how terrified I am, I'm I'm st- I still want to take that right. chance because I mean, just like watching their live streams and seeing the beauty mm-hmm. of it, it's just oh, you know, it would be so cool. And it's also just cool that you don't have to be a smart astronaut now to be sure. able to go to space. <laughs> if you just got enough money, you can do what you want. So this is harder to do <laughs> than to be a smart astronaut, I feel like. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that I didn't like about Jeff Bezos either. He was calling himself an astronaut ev- mm. a- after he came back down. I'm like, dude, you ain't no astronaut. <laughs> like They have to go through very sophisticated, tough decades of training sometimes. Mm-hmm. You're just a billionaire who got everybody else to do the work for you. The space visitor. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I, I like saw that. something too with the the Blue Origin. One of their long goals is to make it more, um, almost environmentally friendly or easier. Like use less fuel and be able to reuse things and make it mm. less expensive in the long run, so more people can can do it. So I know that's one of their long term goals. How are they going to go about doing it that way? I. Why well, I don't know too too much about it, but <laughs> yeah. um, I mean that's a great question. Um, but from what I could guess, it's probably using different or less amounts of fuel because that's really the biggest part. The yeah. biggest cost of this is the tons and tons of fuel needed to just get something off the ground. Yeah, and using up that resources is hard, right? And and building these spaceships too or these rockets, it's millions and millions of dollars, which is why we don't send stuff into space every day. Otherwise, we we probably would do that, right? So making it less of an expense to build and to fly, and that will make it less of an expense Hmm. to buy a ticket to go onto it. I know they were talking, too, about one day, you know, if you can imagine how long it takes to fly on a plane to a different country, um, taking things like that plane going up super high and only taking 20 minutes to get to another country. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they, they really are doing some amazing things. Mm-hmm. I just never would have thought that it would come this soon. Like 2021, <laughs> we're already doing space travel. It it, it blows my mind. Mm-hmm. As a little kid, I just thought that this would be, you know, maybe thousands of years in the future. Right. But well, like we're, look at we're the movies li- we had. <laughs> yeah. I mean like like I was picturing something more like the Jetsons or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But nowadays we're living in Jetson times here in twenty twenty one. It's just crazy to think about. But we still don't have hoverboards. <laughs> Well, actually, actually, <laughs> that they they do have ho- uh, hoverboards. I seen Tony like it ain't like they don't go high right. in the air. I they, can't it, get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, Tony Hawk has one, but he of sure. course is Tony. He should Hawk. have one. Yeah. If anybody's going to yes, have a hoverboard, it should have. be Tony Hawk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a video of him trying out one on YouTube. It ain't like nothing crazy yet, yet. <laughs> but I mean, that's in the future, you yeah. know. They already have jetpacks and mm-hmm. stuff like that. There was this thing last year. Did you see this? Where uh, LAX, there was this guy like flying around the airport in no. a in a, in a jetpack. No, I don't think they ever found the dude either. No, I didn't see anything about them. That is bold. A bold move. <laughs> like yeah, all the all the planes were calling in and complaining <laughs> about this dude that was flying around on a jetpack mm-hmm. with the planes. Oh, so that's that sounds just dangerous. Yeah, but I, it's. He he probably has that like newspaper clip and hung up in sure. his yes. house right now. Like that was. Me. I'm glad I'm glad that everyone was okay. <clears throat> yeah. And now it's funny. <laughs> but and, and that's why like it's it's going to be cool when stuff like that happens. But 
if you go out on US 23 right now, you already see all the dumb drivers that we have. Hmm. Some of them people don't need no jetpack. Some of them people don't need <laughs> no hoverboard. Like, like maybe like an IQ test or something like that oh. before you're able to purchase stuff okay. like this. I, I don't know. I don't know what how the how you should go about doing that. But mm-hmm. not everybody needs that type of technology. Right. And I think that's why it's <clears throat> not readily available yet. Thank God. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> but like, they're doing some crazy stuff. Did, uh, you, did you see the car that like turns into the helicopter? I have a transformer. This is basically, a real life transformer. Basically, I have yes. not heard of this either. That, that's that's an actual thing, and I wow. think that you can buy them. Maybe they're not available yet, but they were working on making them available soon. Hmm. I'll have to look into. I have heard quick. of the Tesla, the self driving Teslas, that they've had a couple accidents, so I think they're still looking. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, into that, but I, it's, the, I, it's starting, starting to become more, um, more. Prevalent. Here it is. The PAL V, the world's first flying car. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, I don't think that they're available yet, but I know that they were working on it. So maybe soon, but I think you're supposed to have like a pilot's license. That would make and sense. And yada, yada, yada. But yeah, like a, a car that has a, has a, like a, drew a mind blank. What do the helicopters have on top of them? Like the rotors. The rotors. Okay. That's the fancy word I was trying to think of. <laughs> it has rotors on the back that like lay down, and I guess you mm. just press a button, they come back up, and they start spinning. And yes, you just this does not sound off. real, but it cool. is very much real, and it's so crazy to like watch the videos mm-hmm. of it because like there's plenty. Like the people that want to look into this, there's plenty of them out there, and you can even the the website that I was just on, uh, palv.com. That's what they're calling the the flying car, a vehicle that offers unique benefits. It, that would be so great to like have, just not to be stuck in traffic all the time. You know, I have seen a car that actually um, raises itself up. It has um, I don't I don't know what the word for that like a hydraulic system, and it lifts itself taller than other cars. So it can drive over cars in a traffic jam. <laughs> I've seen, I, we had one outside. Um, it came to visit where I w- worked before this, and it was this big, almost like a Hummer, that can raise itself above, and it drove. It it works like it can drive over cars, Whoa. which may you know if you think about something like an ambulance or a fire truck that needs to get past traffic but can't. Like that's, that's what I was about to say. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for emergency mm-hmm. vehicles, that right. would be great. Yeah. Wow, we are living in such a crazy <laughs> time right now. And the people out there listening are probably like, what are these people on? Like, what are they talking about? But no, this is actual real stuff that they have nowadays. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I love science. I'm just not smart enough to understand it. That's why, like, I, I'll just, like, I'll see, I, I'll look into stuff. I can't pronounce all the words, and I don't know exactly what all they're talking about, but it just blows my mind that we have the technology that we do mm-hmm. nowadays. Like, even Dubai, how they, like, made their own rain this year. Yeah. That was crazy. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's getting weird out there, but <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's, it's cool that we're able to do what we're doing it is. nowadays. It really, there's so much in almost, you know, every field that you can think of, yeah. um, and the important thing is, so I love Jurassic Park, and there's the classic the, line in it the that thir- just... The third one was my favorite. Okay. Oh, and, you know, that's very... I like the pterodactyls. Interesting. That, that one okay. had the pterodactyls <laughs> in it. Um, but in, in the first one, um, e, Dr. Ian Malcolm yeah. says, basically, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Like, your scientists were so mm-hmm. preoccupied with, you know, them being able to do it, they didn't stop to think, should we be doing it? Yeah. Um. And so far, I think it's pretty. We're, we've got the reins pulled in. I think we're good. Yeah. I think we're good. Robots haven't taken over or anything. <laughs> Yet. Have you seen what they're doing with Boston Dynamics? Mm-mm. I'll show you a video here okay. after the podcast. But just like the day before yesterday or something like that, they released a video. They have these. The Boston Dynamics is a place that is working on robots. And these things are able. They had They had them doing parkour. They mm-hmm. had a parkour course set up for yeah, the robots. Parkour. And, I mean, it was 
They were doing backflips. They were mm-hmm. doing front flips. They were running on like the the things that are slanted like this, and you have to go around in a circle. I don't mm. know what that's called. Some parkour people out there probably know what it's called. <laughs> but robots. They had robots doing all this. Like the robots are in far better shape than I am. Why do they need to be able to do parkour? Why? Yeah. Why do we need parkour robots? I I, I think it was uh, Elon Musk who was like. Robots can do some crazy stuff right now. <laughs> yeah, and and, and, he, like, and see, that's just the stuff they're telling us about. Right. You know that that's just the stuff that they like will let out to the public. Like, hey, check this out. Mm-hmm. But even then, behind the scenes, they're doing something much crazier. It's getting weird. Like, like I love something like Dubai making its own rain. Even though I'm not smart enough to understand how they done that, I tried to Stop read into that. it. <laughs> what <laughs> but, do you mean? <laughs> but, but they, they made their like. I guess they're having like this like. A, bad drought right now mm-hmm. in the country mm-hmm. and they send these drones into the sky to shoot out these type of particles mm-hmm. into clouds and they make storm clouds right. and it rains right like, like they can they make it rain yeah <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> so like, something like that is cool to me because some places actually need stuff like right. that right. And, and, and i love science <laughs> and then we have robots doing parkour <laughs> that's something we don't need that's something we don't need <laughs> e- even this like the helicopter car is something i'm like do we really need that i can't just get a helicopter what's wrong with just Mm -hmm. a helicopter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i mean to each his own to each his own i I love what they're doing right now with the uh, helicopter that they have on mars that blows my mind yes it's actually been going longer than i think they had carved out about a month to have this helicopter fly around and it's still going so they're still like okay (laughs) i think like on the uh the 16th of this month, a few mm-hmm. days ago, the it done its like twelfth fly yeah, or the, something like that. So, uh, at least I know there's been at least eight. Um, so that yeah, probably around then at this point. Yeah, I, I was reading. Uh, I'll look into it here. Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Yeah, I was looking at a uh, CNET earlier this morning, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, the twelfth flat oh, and, oh, and apparently yeah. like it uh, was landing on like rough terrain and mm-hmm. that's something that they were kind of worried about because like like doesn't it have a uh, its own. What do they call the system where it can like basically navigate itself? Yeah, it has to, um, because it can take anywhere from five to twenty minutes to send information to Mars. Yeah. So there are no scientists flying this helicopter in real time. It has to be able to do everything itself. Yeah. Um, that yeah. My mind. Which is it's really great because there's a lot of places on Mars that the rovers can't get to. Because of this rough terrain and yeah. um, things like the the North and South Pole, there's water there, frozen in mixed with with carbon dioxide. But there's water, but yeah. they're really hard to get to. So if we can fly this little helicopter there to see, is there an easy way to get a rover, or can it start to do stuff on its own? That could be really great. And, and and this was just their first attempt yep. at it as well. Yep. <laughs> and that's such an amazing thing that they got it this good the very first try. Yep. Imagine what they can do 20 years from now. Right, <clears throat> right. They might can have one where they can actually fly it themselves. That would mm-hmm. be cool. And, and the pictures that it sends back to is just, oh, mm-hmm. it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> um, and, but, I mean, like, that is, like, almost like my very first thought whenever I seen that they were flying, well, a helicopter was flying itself on Mars. It's just like, I mean, we're aliens now. Right. Like, we're flying <laughs> on another planet. Mm-hmm. And that's some alien-type stuff right there. <laughs> but it is it is so amazing. I wonder what happened to the Mars One mission that they were going to do. There's a lot do, of missions. Oh, do you, do you remember like when they like were taking people from the public? Like you could sign up for it mm-hmm. a few years ago. Do you remember that? I know there was stuff that you could put your name. Yeah. On. I don't know if I yeah. knew about this this people one. Yeah, they had like this thing where just random people could sign up to mm-hmm. make a trip to Mars, and they had like three hundred thousand people sign sure. up for or something sure. like that, and they somehow narrowed it down to like three or four people. But I don't know whatever happened to that. So for some reason it fell through because it was supposed to take place in 2020. And uh, <laughs> that would have been the best year to take off from this planet, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to that. It's, but, I mean, sooner or later, we're going to – somebody out there will be brave enough to travel to Mars. Oh, sure. It, we it, – it's definitely going to happen. I mean, I guess I, you can never say anything's 100%, but – in our lifetime, people are going to go to Mars. Yeah. But 
we, you know, there's other steps that have to be taken before that's possible. Um, so can't say yeah. like when an actual date will be, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, probably that that was probably the issue is just they were trying to rush it. Yes, back then, right? Because I don't know if we have them type of capabilities right now. People just don't understand like everything that goes on behind the scenes. That's why I think that planetariums are so important mm -hmm. is you can go there and talk to smart people like <laughs> you and watch these the, the little films that you show. It really puts into perspective just how much goes into one flat yes. in space. Yep. Ain't mm -hmm. it like a, it's going to take like three months like to get to months. six months mm -hmm. to get to Mars? Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's when we're at our closest to each other, Earth and Mars. And then you have to wait a whole year for the two planets to go around the sun and get up close again and then take a six month trip home. So you'll be in space for at least two years. <sighs> and so whenever people ask me, I think, I, you know, I have them think, OK, think about everything you need for one day. All the stuff that you do, all the stuff you need, water, bathroom, food, shower, all that stuff. And now multiply that by two years. And all of that has to fit on a spaceship to get you there and back. Wow. And that's part of the reason why we haven't done it yet. Um, and the longest stint, I think, in a, an astronaut, like a straight, has been in space, I think has only been about a year Maybe not even that long, but we're, you know, we're still trying to study the effects of not being pulled by gravity Yeah, on but, a body. <laughs> but because isn't, uh, I, I was talking with Steve last time he was up here and he mm -hmm. was telling me about how uh, astronauts, like their organs will be mismatched around inside sure. their body because of the zero gravity. Yeah. And you there. get stretched out a little bit. You're actually a little <clears throat> taller in space. Um, your muscles can atrophy, and that's why they do those exercises all the time. But, yeah, your body gets very conf confused, and then you go right back to, to Earth again, and, and the astronauts, actually, it's a long process to get them, you know, back to just walking around. Yeah. But we don't know what two years will be like on, on a, you know, a human body. So that and, – and but it's it's good that we're – trying to study this before just saying like well <laughs> just go yes. and we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know we want to we want to be as safe as, as we can because this mars one mission that i was telling you about it was like a one-way trip like they were basically saying like hey you're not coming back right yeah it was that they were supposed this to go is, there that's this sounds like you know when um orson wells did the mars invasion radio story yeah. War of the Worlds. I couldn't. I, it was I, I've, I've got yeah. that on vinyl. As yes, well. really. <laughs> yeah. If people look at the history of that, that's that's a fun little history mm -hmm, to look into. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, people thought the end of the world was actually coming <laughs> whenever that first radio broadcast, because yep. some people just didn't know that it was a radio show. Yeah, they, they thought, started attacking water towers because they thought they were aliens. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a neat little story to get into. The uh, and, and Mars One still has a website up, by the way, for <laughs> anybody that wants to look into it. And, uh, yeah, thank God that they're not doing this. Okay, I think that funding was an issue. Okay. I guess, like, every, like, like the, sure. the people that were funding it were like, this probably ain't such a good idea. Let's not do this. So, yeah, hmm. they, they're, they're talking about funding a lot on here. So that's probably Which, it. Or may or may not. But that's a good, you know, thing to. Not, not a, <laughs> not a one-way trip. And, and, and also, instead of just, like, sending normal people let's send some actual astronauts who have the training and the knowledge behind mm -hmm. all of it yeah and and you know my take on astronomy and, and space and all the reason that we're sending these missions out and stuff i think is for us to learn not necessarily to make a place for humans to go because we have a great place here yeah that we can take care of and, With and keep saying and that, right? Of water. That, yeah. and I'm not, you know, saying we should never live on a different planet, but we can also focus on Earth and keeping this as the great place because Earth is unique in the best way. Yeah, it has everything that we need. Yeah, and something like Mars is the probably the best option for us to go to live on, but it's missing everything, <laughs> yeah. pretty much everything that we need. So. Yeah, I, I'm a hundred percent behind you. It just—I I wish we could get people on that track to uh, 
start focusing more on this planet. Mm -hmm. And and I I love space travel. That's going to be so cool whenever they can actually do that. But, I mean, why not take that billions of dollars and just reinvest it in your own planet? Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. would think that that would be the way to go. But maybe it's just, I don't know if it's an ego thing or whatever. It's also exciting. It is exciting. I I get it. And it... I don't. I just don't want people to think that we have to give up on Earth. You know, it's not too far gone by any means for mm. us to say, okay, we got to get out of here. We got it. I mean, I know there's a lot of reasons that <laughs> you might want to say, I'm leaving Earth <laughs> and <laughs> going to live on this other planet. Bye. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's also just it's an exciting prospect to yeah. think about living on a whole other planet. This sounds cool. I, w- I just wonder, like, what the view from Mars would look like as mm-hmm. well. I bet that'd be such a beautiful, mm-hmm. amazing view. Actually, working on stuff like that to so you can see it in the planetarium. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So, <laughs> with the new programs that you are like bringing to the planetarium, mm-hmm. what does that uh, necessarily involve right now? So, I'm, I'm looking into shows where you can come in and let me know what you want to see, and we can fly around the solar system and go visit other planets and objects and asteroids and things and anything that you're curious about it can almost be like you let me know where you want to go that's cool yeah and, um, and instead of showing people what they might not want to see you can you're bringing the power to the people right basically. right, right. Cool. <laughs> you're you're the captain <laughs> i like that mm-hmm. so like whenever you're talking about flying like are you actually flying through space mm-hmm. through this program yeah it, it can take you from earth and we, you can zoom up to Different planets. I'm still I'm I'm looking into what the capabilities are, but I would love to yeah have have basically a a tour of the of space of solar system and other That'd things. Be so cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I, of course, a lot of people are going to say the moon. Oh sure. I, I, that, yeah. I, I just I, I wonder like what is going to be like the most popular one that people want to visit mm-hmm. whenever that's going to be available to the public. Mm-hmm. Probably the moon and Mars. I'll that's keep if I think so. if it ha- if it happened was Jen, I. Think, I think it will. I'm really excited to, to see if that's something that you know people are interested in. But um, I'll keep telling. I'll let you know. I, yeah, I, I would <laughs> love to do something like that. That's that's mm-hmm. really cool. What else are you working on with the planetarium? So I'm I have a lot. I'm, I'm the kind of person who has to, tons of ideas, um, yeah. and then we you know have to take a step back and say, okay, so what actually makes the most sense? And and I'm trying to meet as many people as I can to see, like, what are what are you interested in? What would you like us to see? Um, and I'm planning on meeting with um, teachers in the area that might bring their students in to ask them, what do they need support? Because that's kind of what I see the Science Center as. It's a support for the schools, and then it's an avenue for the community to explore something that they might not, you know, know how to even go about finding Hmm. information right um but planetarium wise um i want it to be a space where if uh something is happening like the meteor shower or an eclipse i want that that to be a hub where you can come and learn about what what it what it is yeah um and we were talking about laser shows before we started and that's something i'm i really love doing because i um they're cool they are so and they're really fun, and um, they're fun to make. And I would love to to curate, you know, new laser shows for <laughs> for people. Even if there's like local musicians around, I I would love to like make a show oh, with local music. That would be idea. cool. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. <laughs> so this is just some of the ideas I've bouncing around. But um, you know, if if anyone around has ideas, I also love partnering with people. You know, I've mm. I've contacted like the local library, and I'd love to you know do partnerships and events. And I just want it to be a really um, community based space, if that makes oh. sense. I like it. it. Has a good <laughs> okay. ring to it. It has a good ring to it. That would be a really cool idea. So mm-hmm. you, you can create these laser shows mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Steve, he took me on like a little tour last time I went down there, and he just like told me how difficult and intricate of a process making those laser shows are. Mm -hmm. How did you learn to go about doing that? Um, Well, I had a a great mentor at my last um, science center where I was before uh, who was in charge of the laser shows. Um, And then when he moved on to another position, I kind of moved in to 
to um, creating those shows and things. So I actually just kind of learned a bit from from him and then just threw myself in and <laughs> figured it out. Um, yeah. And that's it's actually the same system here. So, um, and I know the the company that that they brought me down for a training and everything. So it's it's been a lot of just kind of learning on the fly, but it's a really fun way to bring kind of my creative artistic side and my love of music into this yeah. planetarium base. We, I did like a space themed music laser show, which was like really cool blend <laughs> of everything. But That's cool. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited about the David Bowie show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for, for everybody out there, we were talking a lot about David Bowie before we hopped on air. And, and I think, I mean, like, if you're going to do anybody, well, I guess Pink Floyd would be good too. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he made Space Oddity. You know yes. what I mean? That's Starman. Starman, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like if you're going to do anybody, like a solo mm -hmm. musician, it's David Bowie. <laughs> I, I think that, that would just be a really cool laser show. And, and mm -hmm. whenever you get that one going, I will I definitely will let you know. <laughs> be there for that one. Yeah. But but also like the people. Uh, for anybody that hasn't been to the East Kentucky Science Center Planetarium, it's not just the planetarium. I mean, right. you have a little bit of everything there. Mm -hmm. what, one mm -hmm. of my favorite things in the exhibit is probably the dinosaur poop. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I just, I never would have thought that I would see dinosaur poop. Yep. Nobody <laughs> thinks that. But, I mean, y'all have it there at the Science Center. Is it still there? You still have the dinosaur As far poop? as I know. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I just like the the first time that I ever went there. I was just w looking around and just amazed by everything y'all have there. And then just out of nowhere, boom, dinosaur poop. <laughs> but yeah, if anybody wants to see dinosaur poop, East Kentucky Science Center <laughs> Planetarium has it. I'll make that our new logo. <laughs> but, we but, have dinosaur poop. <laughs> <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> I just like you. You would you would never think that dinosaur poop is in the star city of Prestonsburg, Kentucky. <laughs> it's just such a like just one of those like what. But I mean, like y'all have a lot of neat stuff there, and the uh, the meteorite that was yep. donated to y'all mm -hmm. that uh, you the, encourage that you people can touch. to touch. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What was that called again? I, I I forget exactly what that meteorite was called. Do you remember? I don't. I haven't been able to. It, everything's like packed away, <laughs> but oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I know it. I know it exists. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it's. It's. I mean, just literally something for everybody, and mm -hmm. such a cool learning experience too, especially for dumb people like me who just tries their best to watch these documentaries and read about it. Whenever you can actually go to a place and talk to smart, educated people like you that can mm -hmm. break it down to simplicity for dumb people like me, it's just, it's, 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 it's nice. I'm going to make you give me a dollar every time you call yourself a dumb person. Oh, I'm, it's I'm not, a, it's I am not a true. moron. Whenever, like, no. whenever, whenever it comes to the people that have done these amazing things, like I, I remember the uh, the the Apollo 50 uh, thing that they done at the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium. Mm -hmm. like the anniversary. Yeah, 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 the anniversary mm -hmm. of it. And there was that one woman. Uh, I forget her name. Dang it. But uh, the one woman that was standing next to the books that she wrote out by hand. For the first mm. space flight. Okay. I mean, just like you, you look at people like that and you're like, dang, like people like that exist. Mm -hmm. e everybody thinks of like whenever it comes to smart people, oh, Einstein. But no, there are brilliant people who are. He dropped out of school. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it, it's mind blowing. But like it's. There's but, different levels of, of smart and different ways that your brain can be used and i didn't sorry to inter i didn't oh, no, mean no, to you're interrupt good. you you're good i but i everyone kind of has their passion or kind of their way that they say they learn something best yeah. right um and one of the things that i love about science centers is that everyone can come in and i don't want to just tell you stuff i want you to do the stuff and so you can have that one, even that one thing of, ew, dinosaur poop. Or when I was a kid and I, my first planetarium, I don't even remember the night sky, but I remember that the person doing the show lit a piece of metal as a specific kind of metal on fire and it glowed super bright to show like how bright stars are. And I remember that, Whoa. that glowing thing. I don't remember anything about the planetarium show itself. And now that's what I do. But that one memory, that one, even if it's gross or cool or weird or yeah. silly, if you have that one memory, 
that makes you think, well, science science is cool. Yeah. That's all I want. <laughs> it's science doesn't have to be scary. It's it's cool. And right? it's it's just interesting as well. I uh, and mm-hmm. I mean like whenever you're in school, of course you don't want to listen to all the well, teachers. Sure. <laughs> you just want recess to hurry up or hurry up and get to lunch or whatever it is. <laughs> and whenever you come into a place like this and you can do it on your own time and ask the questions that you actually want to ask, you realize just how amazing it is. Mm-hmm. And also uh, Margaret Hamilton. That was the woman okay. that I was talking about standing next to the code for the uh, first Apollo mission. Got it. I mean, oh, it's just such an amazing photograph to me mm-hmm. that she written the code all out by hand. And the, the books are as tall as her. Mm-hmm. It's for the people that want to look it up, look that up. That is such a mind blowing photograph to me. Yeah. There are a lot of women behind. I mean, that's why they made that Hidden Figures That was movie, a great but movie. But there, there's... Yeah, there's a lot of faces that you don't, you know, everyone knows, you know, Neil Armstrong. Yeah. But there's there's so many people. Um, and then hopefully the next moon mission, the not hopefully, it will. They'll be the first um, woman astronaut to go to the moon. That'd be cool. Yeah. And uh, that that is one cool thing about what Jeff uh, Bezos did with his launch is he had a, a woman on his, mm-hmm. but she was all, like, they had like a, I forget how old she was. I don't want to call her old. But she was like the oldest person, I think, to sure. go into space. Mm-hmm. So that was a that was a neat little thing that mm-hmm. he threw in there. But it just goes to show that like just the brilliant people behind the scenes. Like you were saying, everybody knows Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin mm-hmm. and all no those guys. No one knows guys. Michael Collins, who was just as important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, he didn't get to walk on the moon, but he made sure they came back safely. It's really important. Like, like, <laughs> I, I, like, I mean, like, if anybody's ever felt like the third will, you know, <laughs> you, you're not Michael Collins. That dude, like, that, that's like the ultimate third will <laughs> right okay, there. Bye, God. <laughs> I feel so Have sorry fun. for that dude. But, but I mean, like, whenever it comes to like the, the scientist and all that, like, like I was saying earlier, you think of people like Albert Einstein as being one of the smartest people to ever live. But we have just as smart of people working behind the scenes that you'll never know their names. Mm-hmm. Just like Margaret Hamilton, so many other people mm-hmm. out there should know who that woman is. But, mm-hmm. of course, Einstein gets a lot of the credit. <laughs> but I, I'm just I'm thankful that we have smart people working behind it and not just these billionaires that are trying to do crazy stuff whenever it comes to space. Right. Like like uh, Elon Musk. I, I love that dude. He's like our real-life Tony Stark, and I'm a fan <laughs> I, I hope to get a Tesla one day. The the <laughs> cars are awesome, from what I've read about. But he had this crazy idea. Did you see like where he was thinking about bombing the polar ice caps of Mars? <sighs> Not a good idea, Elon. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just glad that like those people aren't don't don't have much more power than they do. They have a t- a team. It's not just they say a thing and it happens. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I, they they have some smart people behind the scenes. Like, I don't think we need to bomb the polar ice caps there, Elon. Yeah. I mean, who knows what would have happened there? That's like, I mean, now that is like a real life villain type of thing. And for the people out there wondering, like, yeah, very James Bond. He was vibe. thinking about bombing <laughs> another planet, mm. but who knows? I mean, maybe. I just, you know, not everything has to be. Let's blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need to be our first. Um, response that's the american <laughs> mindset i guess <laughs> i don't know but i mean who, who knows what is going to be the next things with mars i'm just glad the rover is up there and mm-hmm. the helicopter is up there because at this point i'm trusting technology more than some human beings mm-hmm. on this earth <laughs> yeah i mean eventually because the, the, there are things that it, they can't do that humans can mm-hmm. um but they're those you know, rovers and helicopters, those things that are there now are testing to make sure we can go there safely, yeah. right? The the um, Perseverance rover has an experiment on it that's going to try to make oxygen from the Martian atmosphere, which wow. is really, right, which would be awesome, that right? Because then, hey, that. that's there's one problem solved that we can do. That's but it hasn't started yet because we're waiting for the ingenuity yeah, <laughs> to yeah. finish and, and, it, and it is something that takes a lot of time, you know. I mm-hmm. mean, like, and for the also people don't understand uh, the funding problems 
that programs like NASA and all of that have. Mm -hmm. That's why it's crazy to think about, but Elon Musk and his SpaceX program has done more than NASA in in the last few years. And and now I'm glad they're kind of teaming up and helping each other out. But, I mean, the the, the funding has been a big issue whenever it comes to space programs and travel. They have to decide what what is worth doing almost they have to of all the cool places we can go nasa has to decide okay well what what do we do which yeah. which, which cool awesome thing do we pick yeah. which is kind of like <laughs> yeah and, and people just don't understand like i mean j- the money i wonder how much mm-hmm. the mars rover costs to build do you know uh a lot off the <laughs> oh. bit. I'm gonna see if I, I don't want to say the wrong. See, and and the thing that I want you and everyone listening to know is, um, you keep saying I'm a very you know intelligent, smart person, but I also don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I look, there's a lot that I learn from the people that I that come to the science center, and there's a lot that I learn by keeping up with the news and by studying. And, and, and you you know, but you can't know everything. <laughs> I, I mean, like, like like whenever it comes to space, you literally can't know everything. The the person that does know everything to space, give them a medal <laughs> because they are smarter than Einstein would have ever been. It's just, and, and also the, the information is changing all the time. Mm-hmm. We're finding out new stuff mm-hmm. all the time, and that's why I was like talking about earlier. Is that's why I love space so much? Is it, it's it's forever changing. Yeah, and yep. our, our understanding of it is yes. like forever changing. Pluto. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but and and also the Perseverance spacecraft <laughs> itself cost two point two billion big ones. Whoo! And that was that's just the rover, yeah. Not the you know capsule that brought it down. Not the actual rocket that took it there. That's just the rover itself. Not the lander or the, the yeah. That were the helicopter or any of that. I'm just mm-hmm. the rover itself, yep. two point two billion. Mm-hmm. So that's why that, that's why it, yep. it, it costs so much. But I, I'm I, I'm so excited about the future whenever it comes to space itself mm-hmm. because I think that sooner or later I, people will be able to visit and also disprove the crazy conspiracy theorist that like hey we're, we're on a round planet okay <laughs> it's earth isn't flat you, you you can be you can be able to go up there and see it for yourself that's, people still might say it's a video on the windows but you know that's okay they're, they're going to say anything <laughs> yeah. that makes sense to them do you have a lot of people like mm-hmm. that that comes into planet no you know not i'm i'm also very i'm you know i'll never argue with like you're wrong I'm, you know i'm i'm interested in your everyone's point of view and i'm happy to talk about okay why do you think that yeah. it's kind of my I, it's a discussion point but i haven't met I, i've i've met a, a few um people who come come in and that you know think that the earth is flat or that none of this is real yeah, or and, that and, but it's very landing. right yeah. right and it's honestly it's very interesting to meet them because it's never a rude yeah. person no one's come up to yell at me like this is off <laughs> you know that's it's it's not like that it's 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 just a very interesting conversation to, yeah. <laughs> to and, and, and that's what and that's what i love about um planetariums as well as you <laughs> if anybody out there does think that or just mm-hmm. or just has questions you know mm-hmm. that that don't understand it you can go to planetariums and science centers and have those types of yep. discussions. You don't That's have why to. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to argue with keyboard warriors on a mm-hmm. YouTube video. Mm-hmm. You can actually go to somebody that knows what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. It, it just yeah. it, it's it's a crazy world we yeah. live in. <laughs> well, like we've been talking about, there's a lot of a inform- <clears throat> lot of different kind of information available. So sometimes it can be hard to even know is this legitimate what i'm even reading yeah so that's yeah that's why it's uh great to to come into places like the science center if you have questions or hey I've, i saw that you know i would get that all the time i read this thing or i saw this article is this is that true is that real and i love when people come in to ask me about that because like great this is why i'm here yes please ask about that and i'm happy to talk with you and if it's mm-hmm. not something i've heard about let's look it up let's find out Let's see what it is. Yeah, I, I'd say you meet some very interesting people coming into Planetariums because, I mean, that's the type of people that really want to come mm-hmm. in there. Right. So, yeah. I, and, and also, I mean, don't, isn't uh, the Prestonsburg Planetarium, like, 
It's like number one in the state. It's or? the it's the most technologically advanced planetarium in, in the state of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. That's crazy mm-hmm. to me. I think it might be even more <clears throat> widespread than that, um, because we have the um, the Kronos star machine, so we can view a super accurate night sky and really see like this incredible pinpoints of stars and constellations and where objects are. Even you know, at, we can show you the sky what it literally look like on the day you were born yeah. or 10,000 years into the future. It's really cool. Um, and then we have the digital planetarium, which is can show you stuff like flying up to the, the different planets and seeing other galaxies and things. Um, and then we have the laser system, too. So there's a lot <laughs> of different things that we can can do in there. Yeah, the first time Steve showed me that, like, like he like brought it to the day I was born. I'm like, how do you know? Now, how you're do like, you know? like, I didn't tell you what my birth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but and, and, but he broke it down to me. Like he kind of explained it to me. Mm-hmm. And even then, I was like, I, I don't know about that. But all right, all right. Yeah, it's all just math, really. Yeah, and and, and, and to and, simplify it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I, I mm-hmm. love playing around with them and stuff like that. But it, it's just it's, it's mind blowing that people are that smart out there and that we've became that technologically advanced that we're able to do stuff like mm-hmm. that. If you could fly anywhere in the universe, where would you fly to? Oh my gosh, what a great question. Um, so many places. So the first thing I thought of, so at the, there, there's a couple different ways you could define the edge of the solar system. And one of the ideas is something called the Oort cloud. And it's basically like a big sphere uh, uh, made out of chunks of ice and stuff. And that's where comets come from. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a bubble. And that's that's kind of the limit where the sun's gravity holds. So that's like one of the ways you could define the edge of the solar system. But we've never been there. So it's it's also just kind of... Not just a theory. I don't like saying that phrase, but it's yeah. it's theoretical that the ore cloud is really there. So I would love to see, is it actually there or oh. not? Is that really there? Um, we'll have to find a documentary about that later on. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It's, it is. It's it's super cool um, because the the farthest spacecraft we've ever sent hasn't even gotten to the next star yet. You know, but it hasn't. It's not going to reach the ore cloud. For a couple thousand more years, and it's not going to even leave the Oort cloud for thirty thousand more years, and that's the spacecraft we launched in nineteen seventy seven, the Voyager one yeah. <laughs> spacecraft. It, so it's so crazy <laughs> that that is still going I mean, too, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and that I mean, talking about uh, going past expectations, mm-hmm. that has really surpassed mm-hmm. expectations. Have they launched another one since then? Well, there's Voyager two, which is kind of going in a, a different direction. Um, that one launched. Well, I guess I think that actually launched before Voyager One. They launched around the same time. Um, but, but I mean, like, if you would think like they got the technology that good and yeah. that precise back in the '70s, mm-hmm. I just wonder why they haven't done another one today that maybe could do better than that. Or I guess the mindset is maybe if it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't know. Well, and there's also a lot to explore just in our solar system, too. So there's if those two are working, yeah. Let them, let's keep, keep them going. Let's see what we can get from them. Um, but while that's happening, now we can, I mean, it takes nine years to get to Pluto to send that, the New Horizon spacecraft to Pluto. It took yeah. nine years. We're only just now getting something to the sun. We've only just, in the past year or so, perfected a spacecraft that can get close enough to touch the sun. And that's the Parker Solar Probe. I love it's one of my favorite missions. It's getting closer than anything has ever gotten. It's actually going to touch the sun. It's going to be in the layers of the the outer layers without melting. And yeah. that's that's there now. I think it just did its eighth pass by. It's getting closer and closer each time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna get these really amazing up close views that we've never gotten before because the sun is so hot. How do they make it to where it won't melt? It's a specific shield just heat shield and they had to find the right materials so the outer shield won't melt and then the heat it can kind of block enough of the sun's heat that the instruments won't melt so it's kind of like you know speaking of tony stark it's 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 like a stark kind of shield so yeah wow yep 
Yeah, that's. See, I mean, like, I, I just like I, I've been into black holes here the la- the last few weeks. Yeah. I haven't really got a chance to look at everything, and that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I mean, I, I can't focus on everything whenever it comes to space because it's just so hard so to understand. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot that's been happening with black holes recently too, and and there's you know the you yeah, got the first photograph that was a couple years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The the very first indirect still because you can't get a direct photograph of them, but that was amazing and that just had yeah just a couple years ago we got that first photograph and then very recently they were talking about the first detection of light from behind a black hole so that's been recently happening which is really cool (laughs) see i i I, that that was really cool to me but also it just it kind of broke my heart because i'm like oh i thought it was like a wormhole i thought (laughs) like you could go to a different dimension but but even then i mean it's it's still a guessing game to really like what happens if you do go into it yep we we will never know until we can send something faster than light yeah which is never know yeah it's impossible (laughs) right now but it's it's space is fascinating and that's why i'm thankful that there are smart people here in eastern kentucky like you to help it (laughs) to help explain it to dumb people like me (laughs) it's a dollar (laughs) <laughs> but but Krista, thank you yeah. for your time today. And for everybody that wants to check out the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium and all the cool stuff that y'all are doing there, how do they go about doing that? Sure. So you can find us on Facebook. We're at the East Kentucky Science Center there. Um, we'll be hopefully opening mid to late October for the public, but keep your eye out on that. Um, our Facebook's right now the best way, um, but I'm also looking into getting other social media so we can reach out to you in other ways also. Krista, thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for having me. See you next week, folks. Boom. All right. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. (laughs) 